And we now present Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. flight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand, till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. I agree with Mr. Blake's poem. The land is pleasant enough. Oh, but I am bored to tears. Oh, sister, why did we bring nothing more to the river bank? I brought an extra book you can read. Yes, but your books have no pictures or, or conversations. I should have brought Dinah. And have your silly cat fall into the water again? You remember how cross she was with her fur all wet. My poor shot. Poor cat indeed. She ran in circles until she was dry, getting water everywhere. Oh, I am so bored. I wish we could play cards or, or croquet or, or you could take a nap. Yes, the warm air has made me feel rather silly and stupid. And hungry. Are there any tarts left for my tea? Not a crumb. Besides, Mother said Cook is making mock turtle soup for supper. Oh, my favorite. Oh, I do hope Cook did not pepper it so much as the last time, though. I thought it was just fine. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I shall be too late. Too late indeed. Oh dear, oh dear. It isn't marked poison. 
Mmm, very nice. It tastes like, like cherry tart and, and custard and, and pineapple and roast turkey and, and toffee. Oh, and hot buttered toast. Mmm, what a curious feeling. It's like I'm closing up like a telescope. Oh, and now I can fit through the door of the garden. But I must get the key first. Oh, no, I am too small to reach it. Eat me? Well, I'll eat it. And if it makes me grow larger, I can get the key. And if it makes me grow smaller, well, I can creep under the door. So, so either way, I'll get into the garden. Curiouser and curiouser. I'm opening up like the world's largest telescope. Oh, but now I'm too large again. <laughs> now I shall never, ever, ever, ever get to see the garden. <laughs> ashamed of yourself. A great big girl like you crying on this way. <laughs> oh, stop at this moment, I tell you. Oh, the Duchess, the Duchess. Oh, won't you be savage if I kept her waiting? Please, sir. Oh. Dear, dear, how strange everything is today. And yesterday, Things went on just as usual. I wonder if I've been changed in the night. Let me think, was I the same when I got up this morning? But if I'm not the same, the next question is who in the world am I? Well, I'm sure I can't be my friend Mabel, for I know all sorts of things, and she, she knows so very little. And besides, she is she, and I am I. And oh, how puzzling this all is. Let me see if I remember all the things I used to know. Let me think. London is the capital of Paris, and Paris is the capital of Rome, and Rome is... Oh, no, no, that's all wrong, I'm certain. I'm afraid I must be Mabel left. <laughs> Let me see if I can recite How Doth the Little... How Doth the Little... How Doth the Little Crocodile... <laughs> Improve his shining tail and, and pour the waters up the Nile on every golden skip. Those are not the right words, I'm sure. I must be Mabel after all, and no one will come looking for me. Oh, I'm so very tired of being here all alone. Oh, heavens, I must be shrinking again. It must be this fan. Oh, that was a narrow escape. Oh, the water! <laughs> oh, I wish I had not cried so much. I shall be punished for it now, I suppose. Being drowned in my own tears. That would be an odd thing to be sure. However, everything is odd today. A mouse! A oh, mouse, do you know the way out of this pool? Perhaps it doesn't understand English. I dare say it's a French mouse. Come over with, with William the Conqueror. Um, ooh, a eh, my shot. Oh, 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 no, 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 I'm sorry. I quite forgot you don't like cats. Would you like <laughs> cats if you were me? My family always hated cats. Nasty, low, vulgar things. But my cat, Dinah, is so sweet. Don't mention <laughs> them again. No, I won't indeed. Are you... Are you fond of dogs? <gasps> oh dear. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Mouse, do come back. Please, we won't talk about cats or, or dogs either if you don't like them. <sighs> Let us get to the shore and I'll tell you my history. And you'll understand why I hate, you know, and dogs. Excuse me, 
but I believe introductions are in order. I'm Agnes. I'm Daphne Dodo. Louise Laurie. Kathleen Caveri. Elizabeth Eaglet. Olive Owl. Dorothea Duck. And I am Millicent Mouse. I will soon make you dry enough. <coughs> Are you all ready? This is the driest thing I know. <coughs> William the Conqueror, whose cause was favored by the Pope, was soon submitted to by the English who wanted leaders. Edwin and Morcar, the Earls of Mercia and Northumbria. Ugh. I beg your pardon, did, did you speak? No, 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 not I. I thought you did. I proceed. The Earls of Mercia and Northumbria declared for him. Even the Archbishop of Canterbury found it advisable. Found what? Found it. Of course you know what it means. I know what it means well enough. When I find a thing, it's generally a frog or a worm. <laughs> the question is, what did the Archbishop find? Found it. Advisable to go with Edgar Atheling to meet with William and offer him the crown. How are you getting on, my dear? As wet as ever. It doesn't seem to dry me at all. Hmm. Well, in that case, I will let the meeting adjourn to the immediate adoption of more energetic remedies. Speak English. I don't know the meaning of half those words, and what's more, I don't believe you do either. <laughs> What I was going to say was that the best thing to get us dry would be a caucus race. What is a caucus race? Why, the best way to explain it is to do it. The exact shape doesn't matter, and there is no one, two, three in a way. We just go and we please to your places. <laughs> venture to ask? Oh, she's our cat. And what a capital one she is for catching mice you can't think. Oh, and you should see her after the birds. Why, she eats a little bird as soon as look at it. I, I, I really must be getting on to my dear little super dog. Come, come away, my dears. It's high time we're all in bed. <laughs> oh, I wish I hadn't mentioned Dinah. Nobody seems to like her down here. Oh, but I'm sure she's the best cat in the whole world. Oh, Dinah, I wonder if I shall ever see you again. Oh, oh, the Duchess, the Duchess. Oh, my dear, pause. 
changed, do you? I'm afraid I have, sir. I can't remember things as I used to, and I can't keep the same size for more than ten minutes together. Can't remember what things? Well, I tried to recite how doth the little busy bee, but it came out how doth the little crocodile. <coughs> recite, you are old, Father William. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white, and yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, said the father, I took to the law and... No, no, that's not right. Let me start. In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might into the brain. But now that I am perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than suet. But you finish the goose with the bones and the beak, pray how did you manage to do it? In my youth, said the father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife, and the muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. That is not said right. Not quite right, I'm afraid. Some of the words have gotten altered. It is wrong from beginning to end. What size do you want to be? Well, I'm not particular as to size. It's just well, one doesn't like growing larger and smaller so often, you know? I don't know. Are you content now? Well, I should like to be a little taller, if you don't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It is a very good height indeed. But I'm not used to it. You will get 
used to it. One side will make you grow taller, and the other side will make you grow shorter. But one side of what? The other side of what? Of the mushroom. Well now, which is which? Oh, how puzzling all these changes are. I never know what will happen next. I'm beastly hungry, though, and it would be quite pleasant if someone here offered me a bite to eat. Look at a door and a footman. For the Duchess, an invitation from the Queen to play croquet. From the Queen, an invitation for the Duchess to play croquet. There's no sort of use in knocking, and that's for two reasons. First, because I'm on the same side of the door as you are. And secondly, they're making such a noise inside, nobody could possibly hear you. Please, how am I to get in? There might be some sense in you knocking if we had the door between us. For instance, if you were inside, you might knock, and I could let you out, you know? But how am I to get in now? I shall sit here till tomorrow. <coughs> or the next day, maybe. But how am I to get in? I shall sit here on and off for days and days. But what am I to do? Anything you'd like. Do, do, oh, there's no sense in talking to him. He's perfectly idiotic.
take this child away with me, they'll be sure to kill it in a day or two. <coughs> Don't grunt. That's not at all a proper way of expressing yourself. I may be mistaken, but your eyes seem to be getting smaller. Your little tender nose looks more like a snout. If you're going to turn into a pig, my dear, well, I'll have nothing more to do with you. What am I to do with this child when I get it, get it home? <laughs> well, if it had grown up, it would have made a dreadfully ugly child. <laughs> but I suppose it makes a rather handsome pig. <coughs> oh, Cheshire Cat, would you tell me which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Well, I don't much care where. Then it doesn't matter which way you go. So long as I get somewhere. Oh, you're bound to do that if you only walk long enough. Well, what sort of people live about here? In that direction lives a hatter. In that direction lives a March Hare. Visit either you like. They're both mad. Well, I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad? You must be, or you wouldn't have come here. Well, how do you know you're mad? A dog is not mad. You grant that? Yes, I, I suppose so. Well, then, you see, a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. But I growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I laugh. <laughs> I call it purring, not growling. Call it what you like. Do you play croquet with the queen today? Oh, I should like to very much, but I haven't been invited yet. You'll see me there. Suppose I shall get used to this. By the by, what became of the baby? I'd nearly forgotten to ask. It turned into a pig. I thought it would. <laughs> well, I've seen hatters before, so the March Hare will be much the most interesting. And as it is May, I suppose it won't be raving mad. At least not as mad as it was in March. Did you say pig or fig? I said pig, and I wish you would stop appearing and vanishing so suddenly. You make one quite giddy. All right. <laughs> I've seen cats without a grin before. But a grin without a cat? Why, it's the most curious thing I've ever seen in all my life. I shall remember it every time I see a crescent moon in that position. Don't stand chatting to yourself like that. You tell me your name and your business. My name's Alice, but... That's a stupid enough name. What does it mean? Must the name mean something? Of course it must. My name means the shape I am. And a good, handsome shape it is. With a name like yours, you might be any shape, almost. You're? Why, you're Humpty Dumpty. You look just like an egg. It's very provoking to be called an egg. Very. Well, they said you looked like an egg, sir. And some eggs are very pretty, you know. Some people have no more sense than a baby. Why do you sit up here all alone? Why? Because there's nobody with me. Did you think I didn't know the answer to that? Ask another. Well, don't you think you'd be safer down on the ground? That wall is so very narrow. What tremendously easy riddles you ask. Of course, I don't think so. But if I ever did fall, the king has promised me to, though you may not believe it, to, to send, send all his horses and all his men. Now, I declare that's too bad. You've been listening at doors, behind trees, and down chimneys. I have not. I read it in a book. How old did you say you were? Eleven years and six months. Wrong. You never said a word about it. <laughs> now, if you'd asked my advice, I'd have said, there's glory for you. 
I don't know what you mean by glory. Of course you know. Till I tell you. I meant there's a nice knockdown argument for you. But glory doesn't mean a nice knockdown argument. When I use a word, it means just what I choose it to. Neither more nor less. Well, the question is whether you can make words mean different things. Ah, the question is which is to be mastered. Impenetrability, that's what I say. Would you please tell me what that means? I meant by impenetrability that we've had just enough of that subject and it'd be just as well if you mention what you mean to do next. Because I suppose you don't mean to stand here all the rest of your life. It's a great deal to make one word mean. When I make a word do a lot of work like that, I always pay it extra. You seem very clever at explaining words. Would you please tell me the meaning of a poem called Jabberwocky? I can explain all the poems that were ever invented, and a good many that haven't just yet. Let's hear it. Twas brillig and slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves and the mow rats outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird and shun the frumious bandits. That is quite enough. Who's been repeating that hard stuff to you? Is that all you have to say? That's all. Goodbye. Well, goodbye? Until we meet again. I shouldn't know you again if we ever did meet. You look so exactly like other people. <laughs> all the insufferable people I've ever met. I 
and then waste it in asking riddles that have no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him. I don't know what you mean. Of course you don't. I dare say you never even spoke to time. Well, perhaps not. Um, but well, I never had to beat time when I learned music. Uh-huh. That accounts for it. He won't stand beating. Now, if only you were to be on good terms with time, do almost anything you like with the clock. For instance, suppose it was nine o'clock in the morning. Just time to begin lessons. Ugh. All you have to do is whisper a hint the time, and around goes the clock in a twinkling. Half past one, time for dinner. I only wish it was. Well, that would be grand, certainly, but well, then I shouldn't be hungry for it, you know? Not at first, perhaps, but you could keep it at half past one for as long as you'd like. Is that how you manage? Not I. We quarreled last March, just before he went mad enough. It was at the great concert given by the Queen, and I had to sing, Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. You know the song, perhaps? Yes, I, I've heard something like it. It goes on in this way, you know. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. Well, I hardly finished the first verse when the queen fell out. He's murdering the time off with his head. How dreadfully savage. And ever since then, he won't do a thing I ask. It's always six o'clock now. Is that why so many tea things are put out here? Yes, that's it. It's always tea time, and we have no time to wash the things between whiles. So you keep moving round, I suppose. Exactly so, as the things get used up. But then, what, what happens when you come to the beginning again? Suppose we change the subject. <sighs> I'm getting tired of this. I vote this young lady tells us a story. I'm afraid I don't know one. Then the Dormouse shall! Wake, Wake up, up Dormouse! Word you fellows were saying. Tell us a story. Yes, please do. And be quick about it or you'll be asleep again before it's done. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters, and their names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly. And they lived at the bottom of a well. What, what did they eat? Uh, they ate treacle. They couldn't have done that, you know. They'd have been ill. Oh, so they were. Very ill. Well, why did they live at the bottom of a well? Take some more tea. I've had nothing yet, so I can't possibly take more. You mean you can't take less? It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion. Who's making personal remarks now? Why did they live at the bottom of a well? Um, it was a treacle well. There's no such thing. If you can't be civil, you ought to finish the story for yourself. No, I I'm sorry. Please go on. I won't interrupt again. I dare say there may be one. <laughs> one indeed. So, these three little sisters, they were learning to draw, you know. What did they draw? A <laughs> treacle! I want a clean cup. Let's all move one place on. I don't understand. Where did they draw the treacle from? You can draw water out of a water well, so I should think you could draw treacle out of a treacle well. Eh, stupid? Well, yes, but they were in the well. Of course they were. Well, in! <laughs> there again. It's a stupid 
precipitous tea party I was ever at in all my life. If you think we're waxworks, you ought to pay, you know. Waxworks weren't made to be looked at for nothing, no how. Contrary wise, if you think we're alive, you ought to speak. I I'm sure. I'm sorry. Pleased to meet you, sorry. I'm Tweedledum, and I'm Tweedledee. That's a very unusual name, sorry. <laughs> Follow us. I misunderstood you. That is so unlike me. I am sorry. What a coincidence. So is she. Are we related? I'm sorry. How do you do, sorry? I'm Tweedledee. And I always be Tweedledum. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> now that we know who we are, would you like to hear some poetry? Do you like poetry? Oh, yes. Some poetry, but... Um, what no, shall no, I no. repeat to her? The walrus and the carpenter is the longest. <laughs> the sun was Excuse shining. Excuse me, but if it is very wrong, would you please first tell me which road I... <laughs> the sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had got no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They were not like anything to see. Such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. Oh, come oysters, come walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. So four young oysters hurried up all eager for a treat. Their coats were brushed, their fishes washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. <laughs> the time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and why the pigs have wings. <laughs> a loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need, pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. Wait, now on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. <laughs> the night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? Oh, oysters, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they eaten every one.
Look out now, Five. Don't go splashing paint over me like that. I couldn't help it. Seven on my elbow. That's right, Five. Always lay the blame on others. You better not talk. I are the queen, so only yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. What for? <laughs> That's none of your business, too. Yes, it is his business, and I'll tell him. It was for bringing the cook tulip roots instead of onions. <laughs> of all the unjust things, I never... Please, why are you painting those roses? Why, you see, miss, this here has not been a red rose tree, but we put a white one in by mistake. And if the queen were to find out, we would all of our heads cut off, you know? So, you see, miss, we were doing our best before she comes to. The queen! The queen! Oh, the oh, queen! Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Think 
how glad I am to see you again, you dear old thing. You're thinking about something, my dear, and that makes you forget to talk. I can't tell you just now what the moral of that is, but I shall remember it in a bit. Perhaps it hasn't one. Tut, tut, child, everything's got a moral, if only you could find it. Your cat was here, but he seems to have vanished. Tis so. And the moral of that is, oh, tis love, tis love that makes the world go round. Somebody told me that was done by everyone <coughs> minding their own business. Ah, well, it means much the same thing. And the moral of that is, the more there is of mine, the less there is of yours. <coughs> How fond you are of finding the morals of things. Oh, I quite agree with you. And the moral of that is, we would you seem to be. Or, if you'd like to put more simply, never imagine yourself not to be otherwise than what it might appear to others that what you were, or might have been, was not otherwise than what you had been if you had appeared to them to be otherwise. <coughs> I think I should understand that better if you had it written down, but I can't quite follow it as you say it. There's nothing to what I could say if I chose. <laughs> Pray don't trouble yourself to say it any longer than that. Oh, don't talk trouble. I make you a present of everything I've said as yet. A wonderful present that would be. Thinking again? I've got a right to think. Just about as much right as pigs have to fly. <laughs> and the moral of that? A fine day, Your Majesty. Now, I give you fair warning. Either you or your head must be off. <laughs> And that's about half no time. Take your choice. Have you met the mock turtle yet? No. I don't even know what a mock turtle is. It's the thing mock turtle soup is made from. But I've never seen one or heard of one. Well, you must go see him, and he shall tell you his history. Oh, Griffin! Griffin! <laughs> <sighs> Up, you lazy thing! Take this young lady to see the mock turtle and to hear his history. I must go back and see after some execution that I ordered. <coughs> what fun! What is the fun? Why, she? It's all fancy, Dad. That. They never execute nobody, you know? Come on. Everyone here always says, come on. I was never so ordered about in all my life. <laughs> never! Sorry, no. Go on. Mate, there's a young lady. She wants to know your history. I'll tell it to her. Sit down, both of you, and don't speak a word till I've finished. Once I was a real turtle. When we were little, we went to school in the sea. For Master was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise if he wasn't one? We called him Tortoise because he taught us. <laughs> really, you are very dull. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself for asking such a simple question. Come on, my fellow, just don't be out there about it. Yes, we went to school in the sea. Though you may to believe it. I never said I didn't. You did. Oh, your tongue. We had the best of educations. In fact, we went to school every day. Well, I've been to a day school too. You need be so proud of all that. With extras? Yes, we learned French and music. And washing? Certainly not. Ah, then yours wasn't a really good school. Now at ours, we had it at the end of the bill. French, music, and washing. Extras. But you shouldn't have needed it very much, living at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> oh, 
I got into a fort to learn it. Oh, I only took the regular course. And what was that? Well, reeling and writhing to begin with, and the different branches of arithmetic. Ambition, distraction, uglification, and derision. <laughs> uglification? I've never heard of that. What is it? What? Never heard of uglifying? No, it's a beautifiers, I suppose. But yes, to what to make anything prettier. Well, then if you don't know what to uglify is, you really are simpleton. What else have you to learn? Well, there was mystery. Mystery, ancient and modern. With geography, oh, and drawling. The drawling master came once a week to teach us drawling and stretching and fainting in coils. I went to the classics master. He taught laughing and grief. He wasn't all the crap he was. He wasn't all the crap he was. <laughs> How many hours a day did you do lessons? Ten the first day, nine the next, and so on. It's a curious plan. Well, that's the reason they're called lessons. Because they lesson from day to day. <laughs> Well then, the eleventh day must have been a holiday. <laughs> of course it was! But how did you manage on the twelfth? Oh, that's enough about the lessons. Let's tell us something about the games now. Oh, yes! Now, you may not have lived much under the sea. I haven't. And perhaps you were never even introduced to a lobster. When I once tasted... No. Never. <laughs> Then you could have no idea what a delightful thing a lobster quadrille is. No, no indeed. What sort of dance is it? What? You've a line along the seashore. Two lines, seals, turtles, salmon, and so on. And then once you've cleared all the jellyfish out of the way, you don't want to step on a jellyfish. That generally takes some time. You advance twice. Each with a lobsterous partner. Of course, advance twice, set the partners. Change lobsters and retire in the same order. Then you know you throw the the lobsters out of Swim after them! Turn a somersault in the sea! Change the lobsters again! Back to land again! Oh! Oh, oh my head! Oh. And that's. No, oh, and that's all the first figure. And I'm sure it's a very pretty dance. Would you like to see a little of it? Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, come now, we can do without the lobsters. We shall sing. Uh, you sing. Oh, I've forgotten the words. <laughs> Will you walk a little faster, said a whiting to a snail. There's a porpoise close behind us, and he's treading on my tail. See how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. They are waiting on the shingle. Will you come and join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, will you join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? You're gonna really have no notion how delightful it will be when they take us up and throw us with the lobsters out to sea. But the snail replied too far, too far, and gave a look askance. Said he thanked the waiting kindly, but he would not join the dance. Big finish. Big finish. Would not, could not, would not, could not, would not join the dance. Would not, could not, would not, could not, would not join the dance. Oh, you must get your dance. Yes, do so like the curious song about the whiting. Yes, as do the whiting. They, you've seen them, of course. Yes, I've often seen them at dinner. know where din may be, but if you've seen them so often, of course, you know what they're like. If I'd have been the whiting, I'd have said to the porpoise, keep back, please, we don't want you with us. They were obliged to have him with him. No wise fish would go anywhere without a porpoise. Wouldn't it really? Why, of course. You see, if a fish came to me and told me he was going on a journey, I should say, with what porpoise? <laughs> Don't you mean 
purpose. I mean what I say. So we try another figure of the lobster quadrille. Or would you like the mock turtle <coughs> to sing you another song? Oh yes, please, the mock turtle would be so kind. Hmm. Now we're counting for tastes. <coughs> sing a turtle soup, will you, fellow? <laughs> Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in a hot tureen. Who for such dainties would not stoop? Soup of evening, beautiful soup. Soup of evening, beautiful soup. Beautiful soup, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Your breath, you may tell us what they are saying in town. I will whisper it. 
The trial ought to begin! You call that a whisper? Do such a thing again and I'll have you buttered. Rang through my head like an earthquake. Never mind. Follow me. Come on. Give your evidence. 
Shot! Your Majesty must cross-examine this witness. Well, if I must, I must. Uh, what are tarts made of? Pepper, mostly. <laughs> Collar that dormouse! Behead that dormouse! Turn that oh, dormouse out of court! Ah, Depress him! Ah, Pinch him! Soft for the girl! But if the tarts are made of... What? Where's the cook? Where is she? Oh, never mind. Call the next witness. Alice? Here. Why, what do you know about this business? Nothing. Nothing whatever. Nothing whatever. That's very important. Unimportant, Your Majesty means, of course. Unimportant. Of course, I meant. Important. Unimportant. Unimportant. Important. Unimportant. Silence. Rule 42. All persons of no significance must leave the court. Well, I'm not insignificant. You are. Totally insignificant. Well, I shan't go at any rate. Besides, that's not even a real rule. You wrote it down just now. It's the oldest rule in the book. Then it ought to be number one. Any your verdict. There's more evidence to be read yet, please, Your Majesty. This paper was just brought in. It's a set of verses. Are they in the prisoner's handwriting? No, they're not in. That's the strangest thing about it. Then he must have imitated somebody else's hand. Please, Your Majesty, I didn't write that. I think I prove that I did. There's no name signed at the end. If there if you didn't sign it, that only makes matters worse. You must have meant some mischief. Or else you'd have signed your name like an honest man. That proves his guilt. It proves nothing of the sort. Why, you don't even know what they're about. Read them. Where shall I begin, Your Majesty? Begin at the beginning, then go on till you come to the end. And stop. <coughs> They told me you had been to her and mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character, but said I could not swim. I gave her one, they gave him two. You gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. My notion was that you had been, before she had this fit, an obstacle that came between him, ourselves, and it. That is the most important piece of evidence we've heard yet. So now let the jury if consider. If any one of them can explain it, I'll give him sixpence. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. If there's no meaning in it, that saves the world of trouble, you know, as we uh, needn't try to find any. And yet, I don't know. I seem to see. Uh, some meaning in them. After all, said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? Do I look like it? All right, so far. I gave her one, they gave him two. Why, that must be what he did with the tots, you know? Well, but then it says they all returned from him to you. Why, there they are. There's nothing clearer than that. Then again, before she had this fit. You've never had any fits, my dear, I don't think. Never. <laughs> never! <laughs> then the words don't fit you. <laughs> It 
It's a pun. Consider their verdict. No, no, sentence first, verdict afterwards. Stuff and nonsense. The idea of having the sentence first. Hold your tongue. I won't. Then off with their head, off with their. Who cares for you? You're nothing but a pack of cards. Oh dear, I shall be too late indeed. Who are you? And the moral of that is... Mad here. Some people are no more sense Who's than a baby. Who's personal remarks now? That's a very unusual name, sorry. This here occupant of Red Rose Street. She's only a child, my dear. Either you or your head must oh, be on to that. Yes, I was a real turtle. What do you know of this business? Down. Down. But this will never end. Alice, dear, wake up. My, what a long sleep you've had. I've had the most curious dream. I was in a wonderland with talking animals, a mad hatter, an entire pack of cards, and ever the most extraordinary creatures. However, they're always ordering me about. Well, I hesitate to say it, my dear, but I now must order you about. If we do not hurry home, we will be late for supper, of course. <laughs> I don't want to be late, and I am famished. I do have one request, though. No pepper in the soup. <laughs> pepper again? How curious. specialty costumes, so the incredible Humpty Dumpty and the head pieces for the duchesses. Um, so, if she's... We have flowers. Um, for her expertise in helping creating the costumes, Mary Woods. And for her work on the props, Teresa Newmeyer. For the woman who created all these beautiful costumes, Julie Reedy. For helping us build and design this set, uh, Mr. Brankin. For her help uh, keeping 
us looking sharp on stage and giving us all the acting advice we could ever need, uh, Mrs. Uh, Wood. Ugh, sorry, Mrs. Mary Schaefer. For being our assistant director, the greatest man we know, and the grandfather we never had, Mr. Tony Calzone. <laughs> for allowing us to perform to the best of our capabilities, for giving us all the instruction we need, being such a great influence, our second mom and our stage mom, Mrs. Kate Castello. I just wanted to thank you, number one, for coming out on a cold Sunday. Uh, but I want to say especially thank you to my mom, who's out there today, because she would read to us Jungle Book, but Alice was what was absolutely one of our favorites. And I don't think there's enough of that being done today. So read to your children, read to your grandchildren, read to your nieces and nephews and the kids you babysit for, because it just brings your imagination alive. And these kids brought the story alive even more than my imagination did when my mom used to read to me. And I just want to thank them and thank the parents for letting them put the time into this production through a lot of difficult uh, you know, times with open houses and all the other ACT and retreats, that the commitments that they had. I think it was worth it. Thank you so much for coming. If there's someone up there, Annie, are you up there yet? Dominic, great crew. It's time to bring up the house lights so the people can go home and we'll put this show to bed. Thank you.